Our today's topic is fossils in time and space. In the last part of this topic, we have discussed that what, how we need different frameworks to study the fossils in time and space. And today we will be discussing those frameworks. One of those framework is rock stratigraphy. Rock means the stones and stratigraphy means stratigraphy comes from the two words. Strati is coming from the statum, which means layer, and graphy means to measure, to study. And the rock stratigraphy is the essential framework that paleontologists use to accurately locate fossils collections in both temporal and spatial frameworks. So it means that it is very important for us to study the rocks and their patterns and how they are deposited and during the deposition how the diff remains of different organisms are in between those rocks and that is we call as the fossils. We have to study all these things and these are the most helpful way of studying the paleontology in today's world. In earlier times, there was a scientist uh, uh, who was Leonardo da Vinci. He was a famous painter as well. And we know that he was a genius ahead of his time. Uh, he was also the person who was responsible for the advent of modern stratigraphy. He gave us the idea that the different layers of the earth are formed and he and he, he said this and he described these and also he made some very excellent sketches describing the earths of different uh, layers of different earth in the Tuscany region of his area. Da Vinci portrayed a clear sequence of laterally continuous horizontal strata. Laterally continuous, that means they are going towards the lateral side. And horizontal strata, that means these are the horizontal layers. It's not vertical, horizontal layers. And these are showing the concept of superposition. Superposition, what is superposition? If you take two books, one book upon the other is superimposed. That means one upon the other. My hand is superimposed on my second uh, other hand, right? So my left hand is down my right hand is up so it is superimposed both hands are superimposed so is the layers of the earth and he gave us the idea of the super imp uh, imposition superposition now th there was another scientist who, who, whose name was nicola steno he established the simple fact that older rocks are overlain by the younger rocks if the sequence has not been inverted he said that the rocks that are down there, they are older and the rocks that were, they are up, they are less older or they are younger. And this is called law of superposition of strata. Strata again from, comes from the stratum, that means layer. He also gave the idea of or, original horizontally, right? So he said that all the layers are formed in a horizontal position. And if there is a layer which is not horizontal, it must be in a horizontal in its original form. Strata either perpendicular to the horizon or inclined to the horizon were at one time parallel to the horizon. And he also gave us the principle of lateral continuity. That means that the layer will continue laterally. It will go above and beyond from the field of view, right? So if you are seeing this layer, it does not stop laterally, it will go on and on. The material forming any stratum were continuous over the surface of the earth unless some other solid body stood in the way. And he also gave the idea of cross cutting relationships. If a body or discontinue cuts across a stratum, it must have formed after the stratum. So here in this fourth uh, uh, year idea, we get the age, uh, the idea of relative aging. He tells us that the horizontal layers are older than the vertical one. If organisms present, fossils present in the horizontal layer, 
are there and there are some organisms which are in the vertical layers then you can tell that the organisms which are in the horizontal layers they were older and then there are the different types of stratigraphy stratigraphy has different types uh, one is lithology lithology lith comes from the dirt right so lithology it is from the uh, common stones uh, lith lithostratigraphy means the we are studying the layers of the stones in our crust of the earth to see the different fossils uh, and it, it does not only goes for the fossils it is uh, pertaining to any other science right it is sort of a geological branch not paleontological and then then comes the uh, fossils which is biostratigraphy right so if you you combine the both of the first two then you will have the paleontology right so and maybe chronostratigraphy which means that times a uh, time and how we study the layers with the time and then there are the tectonic units such as thrust sheets we know uh, we have discussed about that how tectonic plates come together and when they come close to each other they form the hills and layers are uh, able, we are able to see the layers that's why the fossils are more prevalent in the areas of the mountains or where the uh, geologically active areas and then there is a magnetic polarity which is called magnetostratigraphy uh, when the uh, uh, some volcanic activity happens there is a lot of ash going up in the air and this ash contains of very small particles these particles may have magnetic properties and when these particles deposit on the earth they are aligning along the polarity of the earth our earth has its own magnetic field now when they are aligning they are aligning according to the a polarity at that time the magnetic polarity at that time our earth's magnetic polarity changes with time so when you see a fossil or when you see some uh, volcanic ash deposits and you see that polarity is in this side but actual polarity is on this side then you can see that how much time has been uh, passed till that polarity and you can uh, assess the age so it has many other applications as well and then there are chemical composition in which you see the different isotopes in one rock right so the chemical uh, different chemicals in different layers of the rocks and then there are discontinuities right so sometimes erosion happens there are some gaps between the layers and seismic data uh, sometimes there are uh, earthquakes it will give you the are uh, the information of the rocks it will give you about uh, that information as well and uh, depositional trends right so how the deposition happens right for example there are four seasons and the deposition in the four seasons are different and the sequence stratigraphies that mean that means there are some sequences first there are simple organism there are complex there are complex simple rocks there are uh, as you go down the rocks are more condensed as you go up the rocks are less condensed so this is sequence stratigraphies so all of these things these are the applications or the types of the stratigraphy